Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at how you can use the Quixel imperfection textures that you can find on uh, Quixel Bridge integrated with UE5. And we're going to build a master material that you can use to create your own custom materials from the ground up. And I'll also show you how you can integrate these imperfection textures into a material that you might already have existing in your project. Okay, so first I'm going to look at what is an imperfection map and where do you get them. And so luckily with Unreal Engine 5, we have integrated access to Quixel content. I can just go to my content browser, click here, add Quixel content, and I can find the imperfections category. And so there's a bunch of subcategories here with all types of imperfections that you might use for different kinds of surfaces in your project. And there's two kinds of uh, files in here. Well, two types of information that you can get from these texture maps. And I'll show you that and how to identify them here. It's not very clear. Uh, when you download the files which are which but I'll show you two examples just to show you so I'll go to rubber here and I'm going to download this one scratched rubber I've already downloaded it actually I'll just add it to the project and uh, I'll go back to bridge here and I'm going to go to stain and I've already downloaded one of these here as well I'm going to add that to my project as well okay and back in the project I'll open up scratched rubber to start with and so we can see here, uh, if I isolate these RGB channels, I'll just turn them all off to start with. And uh, I'll turn on the red channel, and we can see there's no information at all in the red channel. If I turn on the green channel, we see this information, which is the roughness information for this imperfection. And the blue channel is also empty. So yeah, all the information is stored here in one channel, the green channel. And that's the first kind of texture map you can get in the imperfections category. Uh, so I'll close that one. And I'll go ahead and open up the stains uh, imperfection map. And so with this one here, uh, I'll turn off the, uh, all the channels again. And I'll start with the red channel. And there is information in the red channel this time. And this is a color mask. And basically this is so if you want to add color to this uh, stain, you can use the red channel as a mask for where the color should go. So if you tried to use the roughness uh, channel, the green channel as a mask, the problem with this is in the roughness channel, we're applying uh, a value to all of the surface. So even the part of the surface that isn't stained here, it's giving it some sort of value of, of roughness here. None of the image here goes completely to black so it's not really a mask if you use this for color it's going to tint the entire uh, model or the entire mesh that you're applying this material to so they provide you with a separate mask by way of the information in the red channel uh, if you want to add color to an imperfection all right so that's the two kinds of uh, information you can get from these textures and that's how to identify them uh, one from the other so let's move on to how you can add uh, some of this imperfection information to say a material that you already have. So let's say I've got the first person template open here. Uh, this is all made up of this prototype grid material. So what if I wanted to add an imperfection say to this uh, existing material? What I can do is I would open up the, uh, this is a material instance, so I'll double click here and I can find the parent material is this prototype grid material. So I'll open that up and I'll just dock that up here. And uh, what I'll do here is we'll find uh, the base colors being made up of the uh, grid and background color functions that are down here. And then the roughness is uh, just a parameter exposed uh, default set to one. What I wanna do is add information to the roughness. So I wanna set this uh, parameter, the default, let's say to zero and I'll drag in I'll find the uh, scratched rubber and drag that one in here. And what I'll do is I'll just disconnect this and we'll say add, and we'll add the information from the green channel and plug that into the roughness pin. And I also wanna be able to uh, indicate some tiling for this, depending what surface you're applying this to. I'm just gonna right click and get a texture coordinate node. And then I'll multiply and I'll plug that into the UVs here and I'll hold S on the keyboard and click to get a scalar parameter. We'll call this tiling and I'll plug that into B. Okay, and I'm gonna set the default value for tiling uh, to five, let's say, to start with. And uh, so let's go take a look so far at 
our first person map here. Okay, and so I can't see a whole lot uh, right off the bat. Um, if I get a little bit closer to this uh, darker material, I can definitely see the scratched rubber uh, going on there. Um, the floor here, uh, let me click this one and open up the material instance. And we'll just take a look at the material instance and the material here at the same time. Ah, uh, yes, we'll set the roughness here. Uh, so if I set the roughness, uh, well, we'll set it back to zero, let's say. And uh, now we can start to see the imperfection coming out. Um, obviously, if the roughness is already maxed out at one, there's no more room to add any more roughness. You're not going to see any effect. So you need to start at zero, or you can even start below zero. Let's say I want to make this look a bit more shiny or uh, wet looking, uh, more like rubber mite. Uh, you might start, start off your roughness at, say, minus 0.3. And uh, so now we can see that effect in the floor quite a bit more. And uh, you could change the tiling here as well. Maybe, um, you know, the floor is a pretty wide piece here. You can look at the scale and see it's 30 by 35 meters. Uh, so we could set the tiling as high as uh, 35. Or, uh, you know, maybe that's, uh, you know, too high, too repetitive. Maybe we could set it to... 20 or something like that. Uh, and so we've added our scratched rubber imperfection to our existing pro prototype grid material. Okay, so now let's move on to how you can create your own custom material from the ground up using these imperfections. And so we're going to build a master material that's going to let you use these textures and uh, adjust all of the uh, options that you might want to adjust. Okay, and so what I'm going to do here is I've uh, built a mesh using the Lyra Advanced Window Tool. And I'm just going to import that uh, static mesh into the scene here. And uh, we'll set up some materials uh, and apply them here to the wall and the trims and uh, etc. Uh, so I'll start off by making that master material. So I'll just right click here, uh, make a new material. I'm going to call this M underscore Imperfection Master. All right, and to start with, uh, I'm going to hold 3 on the keyboard and click to get a vector 3. I'll right click that and say convert to parameter, change the name to base color, and uh, we'll plug that into base color for now. And I'll just set it to like a medium gray or something for uh, as a default color. All right, and I'll hold S on the keyboard and click to make a scalar parameter. We'll call it metallic, and I'll plug that into the metallic pin. Uh, and then for roughness, I'll do a similar thing as uh, before here. We'll uh, hold S and click again here and call this one Base Roughness. And then uh, we'll do an Addition node here. And I'll just right click and get a Texture Sample node. And we'll plug the green channel into B and plug this into Roughness. And uh, I need to specify a texture here. But this is the master material. And so I don't really want to specify a texture here. We want to specify it in our material instances that we're going to make. So I can just uh, put in a placeholder here by finding that in the uh, engine. Uh, any of these will work. I'll just select black placeholder. And uh, again, I'll introduce uh, tiling here by making a texture coordinate node. And then I'll use a multiply. And we'll make another scalar parameter here called tiling. And I'll set it to a default value of, let's say, 1, and plug it into B here. OK, so that's the basic setup uh, to introduce the imperfection uh, um, into the roughness. Uh, but what we want to do here as well for this is we want to introduce the ability to add some color. So for something, let's say, like uh, rust. Um, so if you, have, if you want to introduce rust, you need to affect the roughness, but also it's sort of a reddish brown color, and so you need to add some color. So what we'll do here is move this up, and I'll duplicate this, Control-D, and I'll change the name for this one to Imperfection Color. And uh, I'll set the default color to maybe black. And what I want to do is use a lerp node between these two colors. So I'll drag off of here type in lerp and get a linear interpolate. And we'll lerp between these two colors. Uh, and the alpha that's going to drive the lerp is going to be this texture sample. Uh, so I'll just back this up here for a minute. And so we looked at the uh, color mask. And so 
uh, we know that some of these textures use a color mask and some don't. So what I want to do is right click here and say static switch parameter and I'll call it has color mask question mark. So we can set that now in the material instance to true or false. Uh, and what we'll do is if it's true, then we'll use the red channel. And if it's false, then we're just using the green channel. And the result we'll plug in here to the alpha. But I also want to, before I plug it in, I want to multiply this so we can adjust the intensity. Uh, we'll plug the result from the multiplication node in here to the alpha. And I'll make a new scalar parameter here called uh, add color intensity. Uh, I'll set the default value for that to 1. And we'll plug that in to the B node here for the multiply. Uh, so now we can uh, adjust the intensity of how much color we're adding from this mask. And I also want to say uh, be able to turn on or off whether we're adding color at all. So uh, I'll just use this, grab this has color mask switch parameter, uh, go over here and control D. We'll change the name of this one to uh, add color question mark. And if it's true, then we'll use the output from this lerp node. Uh, and if it's false, then we'll just use the output from just, just the base color. Uh, and the result will drive into base color here. All right. And so that's basically the setup here for the master material uh, that you can use with all of these imperfections uh, under all, all of these categories on uh, Quixel here. Uh, so let's take a look. Let's make our first uh, material instance. So I'm going to right click the imperfection master here. Well, first I'll just apply, make sure everything's compiled here. OK, I'll right click and say create a material instance. And I'll call this mi underscore, uh, let's say, tunnel wall, tunnel walls. All right. And uh, I'll drag this over to the tunnel walls to apply it. And uh, we'll open this up and we'll take a look at the uh, material instance and the tunnel wall here at the same time. OK, and so uh, let's go back to bridge here and find uh, something interesting to apply, actually. Um, I'll just uh, close this for a second. I'm going to go to uh, metal and uh, let's find, I'm going to go to scratched metal. And I've already uh, downloaded a couple here. So maybe I'll just grab one that I've already downloaded here and add this to the project. All right, so I'll open up that tunnel walls instance again here. And I'll check. Uh, oh, I didn't make uh, the texture 2D a parameter. OK, so I need to go back to the master material here. Uh, and this texture sample, I need to right click, say convert to parameter, call this imperfection texture. All right, apply. OK, and uh, so now I have this imperfection texture exposed in my material instance. So I'll check that, and I can find any of the material textures, uh, or imperfection textures, I should say, that I've downloaded there from Quixel. So I'm going to find the scratched, uh, let's see, scratched painted metal. And we can see just a subtle impact from uh, the roughness channel so far. Uh, but for scratches like that, it's not really going to work to just be in the roughness. I want to add color. So we're going to select add color here. And I'll say uh, true. And now I can say has color mask. And so without looking at that specific download, all I have to do here uh, is I can say has color mask and select true and see if I see an improvement or not. And I can see that for sure there was an improvement. When it was uh, false here, I'm tinting the entire base color uh, toward the imperfection color, toward black here. Uh, so let's say I change this imperfection color to like a blue. Okay, we can see the whole base color is changing. This should actually just be blue on gray, um, but it's not. Uh, and so we can tell it has a color mask here because if I turn this to true, now we've got our proper blue on gray. Okay, and so let's just change these colors around here. Let's say I made the base color uh, maybe a deep yellow here. 
And uh, I'll change the scratches color here back to sort of a dark gray. Okay, uh, so I'm pretty happy with that for now. And so I'm gonna move on and make another instance here from the Imperfection Master. Um, so here, I'll just close these up here. I don't need those anymore. Uh, right click, create a material instance. I'm gonna call this MI underscore uh, tunnel window uh, trim. Okay, and so for this one, let's take a look at, uh, I'll go back to the bridge here and uh, we will look at maybe uh, I'm going to look under metal clean and find uh, iron oxide. Uh, it's a weird spot to have uh, rust is under clean metal, but that's where you'll find it. And so uh, I've downloaded that. I'm going to add that to my project here. All right, and I'll open that instance again. And uh, under imperfection texture here, I'm going to find iron oxide. All right. Uh, and uh, I'll just drag this uh, material here onto the actual trim. Get a bit closer here. And I wanna make this uh, metallic. I'll set this to, let's say one, fully metallic. Uh, the roughness is going to be a little bit negative and we'll set the tiling maybe a bit higher, like two. All right, oops. And uh, so that looks all right, but I wanna set the base color to be a little bit uh, shinier, so I'll put it more toward white. And uh, I'll lower the base roughness a little bit more here. And uh, now I wanna add some color. So we'll select add color and set that to true. Uh, it has a color mask is true and uh, for the imperfection color here, I'll find uh, sort of a reddish brown rusty color. All right. Yeah, something like that, sure. Okay, so and uh, it's just that easy to set up uh, your own material, essentially custom material, uh, you know, within uh, the parameters that you can set here, right? Uh, basically, you're setting up, uh, you know, some amount of tiling, some uh, albedo adjustments here on the base and the imperfection colors. Uh, and your roughness and metallic settings, etc. cetera. Um, and of course, there's a, a ton of these different uh, textures. You know, just for iron oxide, for example, there's uh, iron oxi oxidized coated steel, iron oxide, iron oxide, a third. Uh, so there's three right there. There's zinc oxide. There's uh, another iron oxide there and another one here. There's five just right here. And I think in another category, there's uh, one called rust. Um, so lots of options and lots of uh, ways that you can uh, use those uh, using this master material. And th this is going to work for basically all of those materials. Um, so that's the setup and I uh, hope that works out for you and hope you enjoyed watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.